Yo, what's good, y'all? Coming at you with another episode of Live from the Inkwell. Oh yeah, that's Colin playing in the background right there. He'll be on in just a few minutes. Queen Kelsey in the background yelling and she said, hey, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He said, hey. Yeah, man. I, I was going to off work like a couple minutes ago. Oh, man. I appreciate the dedication, man. You're showing up. Right after getting off work. I know. I'm sorry it took me a minute to send the uh, <laughs> to send the info. Oh, it's it's cool. Be time there. Yeah. <laughs> what you sipping on? Hmm? What you sipping on? Oh, it's just a cup, man. That's all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you just got an empty cup? Like, ah, uh, okay, okay. I know, but I didn't want to be on there like, yeah. Oh, what difference does it make? Yeah. <laughs> I, I be thinking about this stuff, you know. I appreciate you thinking about the kids. Think That's about the nice. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, so I start off. I like I like to start off the show with what I call a wiffle. Wiffle starts off. Uh, it stands for what you feel like expressing. So uh, this is your moment to express whatever's on your mind right now. There's no filter, no bars, nothing like just say whatever's on your mind. Man, honestly, the first thing that comes to mind, especially getting off of work, is just consistency. You know, mm. I think uh, in anything you do, man, consistency is going to get you there. Whether you, you know, everybody's going to have those ups and downs everything comes with that you know that's that's just balance in itself but when you have them down moments consistency is what gets you through and keeps you successful especially when you're on you know so that way you can have another up moment because some people get stuck at that valley and never make it out and you see people like man this dude was stuck in time for like 20 years or like you see people at the gas station that that you know they hit that one rock and they never bounce back mm. Or people who get, you know, in those those ruts where they start, you know, complaining about life and then they start complaining about their job and then but you still there for like six more years saying the same thing. You never really tried to be consistent on getting another job or bettering yourself. You know, you you got excited for about two days and then we never heard from you again. But yeah, consistency is the name of the game. Word. Reach all the day when I'm at work. So word of the day, consistency, man. That's that's crazy, man. Because we've been talking about that in Permanent Ink lately. We feel like that's our our theme, one of our theme words for 2021. We're like, this is our year. Like, everything, we're just trying to be consistent. Doesn't matter how we feel about it. It's just like just being consistently working at our craft and working at what we're trying to trying to do. Right. So the one thing I like about you guys, man, y'all are real adaptable. You know, I remember I was there when we all had the album release. Mm -hmm. uh, from when you had to adapt to the to the the technical situation. Oh yeah. Now we got COVID. You know, you guys are uh, you know showing yourselves in different facets. Now you're doing you know these these live interviews and everything. Mm. Um, but for for people who don't follow you, who don't know, you know they they do the uh, uh, what's it called the live jams where everybody comes in. It's just completely raw, completely free. You know. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's one I can say about you guys. I mean, you guys really really stick with it. And you guys are consistent, so it's it's motivating, you know. 
Thank you. We, we appreciate that. I'll send you a check after the show. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, man. So, man, especially like, you know, uh, since you mentioned inconsistency, man, the thing I, I've seen consistent about you, you are very loyal to, to Kelsey, you know, um, and, and being a guitar player in her realm like sticking to her sound and that so like what's that journey been like like did you start playing guitar when you hooked up with kelsey or, or did it start before that what's what happened talk about kelsey huh when i met kelsey i met kelsey like year like back in 2012 i had like a, a little precursor that i had auditioned for multiple bands like church i was getting well, i'm not to that so i mean i, I auditioned for church audition for like some other bands, I just never made it. I felt like it was made to actually meet her in the group that we went, uh, that we were with initially, Dalton Village. Mm -hmm. I met her there. The band had kind of fizzled out, and Kelsey was so consistent. You know, she was actually really the person who was the motivator, the organizer. She was the the brain you know, behind the operation, and mm -hmm. also the voice too. You know, because she was the vocalist. So you know, it was her and JT, and then me and a couple other musicians. Uh, and I wanted to stay consistent. I would I didn't know anything outside of the band. She had all these, you know, c connections with people that I knew, but I wasn't really working with them. And so I saw her working, you know, and she actually invited me back to uh to be in her band when she had broke off and did her solo thing. So that was that was really honoring and a humble moment for me because I didn't know what I was gonna do. I I was actually about to start doing open mics and just be that guy doing like poetry and playing guitar. <laughs> I wish I was consistent with that because like, you know. What eight years later, probably would have been a, a lot further along at this point, you know, and it would have been a lot more content. But uh, yeah, so she invited me on there too. Uh, Kelsey will definitely, she's a powerhouse, you know, she will, uh, she's not going to stop and she's not going to let you stop her. Mm. You know, she's not afraid to reconstruct, reconfigure, reschedule, you know, whatever. And, you know, she's just kept me on. We developed a really good bond and relationship, you know um on and in and outside of the music you know what i mean um and now i don't know man i'm a leo so i just when i love people i just i'm I'm loyal to that you know and it's like nothing ever changed too and then also too like i was like how can i be useful to kelsey you know what i mean so i man, i'm gonna get this i'm gonna get this band house you know because i was actually sleeping on my friend's floor for like six months but i was like man, trying to nine months really but i was like man i need i really need to get this place and I wanted to find a place that can house our practices because she used to use her place for practice. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to recreate what she had already started and it just, you know, tied back into it. And now we practice at the house. We have a, a space to, to play and uh, we even do our little uh, live, live performances. We go live and do like, you know, covers of uh, a couple different songs. And then we do her originals too. We have the lighting set up and everything. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a journey, you know. It's, just, it's been a journey. I learned a lot from her. Right. Uh, you know, the fact that she's uh, self-employed, you know, self-motivated. She, she's like self-everything, pretty uh -huh. much. It's, it's inspiring, so I really try to be around people that inspire me, such as yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you I'm going to send you that check. It's been fun. It's been fun. i say that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Right. Okay, so I mean, so I mean, uh, you talked a lot about Kelsey, but I mean, what you know, you had the practice place. You brought you brought your house, and I, I know y'all y'all still rehearse there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's definitely been a consistency thing. So what what does Colin's personality bring to the table? Like, what if you weren't a part of the Solar Flares? What would they be missing? You know, what would they be missing? I mean, that's pretty big to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, but you you. You met. You bring a very p particular part to the to the whole picture here. You know, especially having been with Kelsey before, yeah, the Solar Flares yeah. formed and everything. So you are a pretty um, what's to call intricate integral piece to to the puzzle here. You know, so I I don't I don't know, man. I'm like one of those guys that don't really see himself. You know, just kind mm. of see. Himself. So I'm know I don't know like especially playing sports in high school and stuff, there's always been like that that guideline that I stick by. Your your team is only as strong as your weakest link, right? Yeah. So I always feel like I'm the weakest link, even mm. if I'm in a room of people that are like beginners. So I'm like, how can I make, how can I fill in this gap? And I, I boil that down to songs, to 
projects to when we did our, our live uh, uh, performance, um, you know, outside back, on, you know, on Halloween of last year. I don't know. I'm just always like, how do I fill in this gap? So I just try to be useful, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't know how useful I am, you know, until, until <laughs> something. But what would they be missing? That's a tough question. Uh, I'm scared to answer that question. They might. That's not like it right there, man. You you feel like you, you're the tool, the all around tool, the the thing that you know. Um, what do they call it? The Swiss Army knife. Yeah, that's what I want to be, man. I just I just want to be that guy that you know. If you ain't got it, he he might have it, you know. Mm. So and I, I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to equipment, you know, to stuff. So like I I be having random tools, you know. Yeah, I got. Oh man, he had the flashlight that had the cool Swiss thing at the random time moment. You know what I mean? I just, I just always been that dude. Uh, well, to answer your question, because I'm really trying to deflect from it, I can't even lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what would they be missing? They be missing me? Nah. Um, I don't know, man. I don't even. I don't know. I was like, I can't even look at myself like that. I, would, I would feel like I would. I feel like I'd be ego tripping if I if I came out with something. <laughs> I respect it, man. I'm up with something to say. Yeah. It means you're humble, man. It's, it's, it's like whatever gap needs to be filled, that's where Colin fits in, man. I just want to I just want to help, man, you know. And then <laughs> I love music, man. I love having fun. So, like, say the gap might be everybody low on energy. Oh, I'm going to tell some jokes, and I'm going to say some vulgar things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some smiles on everybody's faces. And maybe that's what's needed for the night, just to change the, you know, the energy, shift that. You know, it's not always, you know, material or – uh, you know, an action plan of what I can do. It's just like, man, let me just let me just be cool to be around. Let me let me keep the vibes going, you know. Because I want, you know, you, it's hard being in a group of full of, you know, musicians and everybody's dead. It's like, man, I don't even feel like being here right now. Mm. Like, well, not today. Not while you're <laughs> you're going to do this for the next hour. You know. But <laughs> sometimes that's what's needed. So that's what I try to do. Word. I'm bring it, to be honest. Hmm. So so take us back. Uh rewind. I'm gonna rewind even further back. So when did you first know that you wanted to get into music and was guitar where you started or did you start somewhere else? It's it's it, I started with guitar. It's only well, as a kid, man, I used to try to get into music with the church. I try to play the uh the piano, but my teacher wasn't consistent word of the day, right? <laughs> with me. So that kind of fell off and I was an artist for like the whole time frame, artist and athlete up until college. It wasn't until I got, I tell you, so I got kicked off campus because I was smoking on campus, right? And so I was like, it was that and a, a bunch of other stuff to get kicked off and banned from the campus. But when I moved into my new place that summer, it was like I listened to uh, ACDC for those about the rock because I was trying to find something on the radio. I was like, I'm tired of hearing like Power 98 and I, you know, and, you know, all this in Charlotte. And so uh, that came on and I fell in love with the sound. Then I started playing my little sister's Hannah Montana guitar in the middle of the night. Nobody really knows about this, you know. Pink little, it wasn't even tuned, so I don't know how I was playing it looking back. Wow. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I was, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I started playing that. Then I started researching. I'll tell you a funny story. When I bought my first guitar, I saved up all my money. I got, in, and then I, I went to the pawn shop, bought it. As soon as I pulled out of the pawn shop, I got into an accident. Oh. Tore the front of my car off. I never forget. And, and this is when I knew I was like, you know what? I can either stop or I can keep going. Nothing's gonna stop me, right? Like either I'm gonna die doing this or what. So I get it, and I get hit, and it is. And this is like five lanes on the most busiest street in Charlotte, like on North Triangle. And um, you know, this F-150 tears the front of my car off. I'm spinning in there. The cops come. They put the cones out. They got to be everywhere. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm that guy out there, like messed up you know <laughs> but the only thing i heard about was my guitar so from then on i was like you know what i'm gonna do this and then my dad was like you know you have to take that guitar back and stuff i was like no nah, man i saved up my whole summer which really i was really saving up for money for you know for school uh -huh. but uh you know this was just something i was passionate about so from then on i just started playing i was self-taught i didn't really uh take any classes or anything like that until like towards the latter end of my college you know, career. I took uh, one music theory class, which just put it all together. I mean, I spent nights just Googling everything outside of my major about guitar, abs, uh, tricks, techniques, harmonics, 
uh, just educating myself. I was, I was, I should have been a music major, you know. Mm. I, I even pledged five Mu Alpha, so I was, you know, I was, I don't know why I did just switch majors. You're right, 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 right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was just, it was, it started off as therapy, and, and then I was like, man, I want to be that guy on stage rocking out, you know. You know how some people like, you have a goal, you work ten years or so to achieve it, and you get it, and then you have this simple, this sense of emptiness. Uh, That's what. Man, cause I was like, I just want to be good on guitar, so I did that. And I'm like, so now what? So now it's like, COVID's making us rethink our approach to you know to our finances, to the way that artists live, and that we approach you know the community of followers that we have and people there. How we provide this entertainment and a work at home, you know, environment. So it's just, um, I don't know. I, I actually got on the ramble right there, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I mean, you're a good storyteller. You were telling us about your humble beginnings, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was your major? Man, nobody used to listen to me. My roommate used mm -hmm. to go to his room and, and call his girlfriend every time I started playing the guitar. You know the Usher song, You Got It Bad? Yeah. So that solo was like really, what, like a minute long or mm -hmm. so? I was like, I learned this solo, and I was like, I'm going to play this for these girls. And I was like really trying to impress them. It took me five minutes to finish that solo. By the time I picked my head up, they were like, they were laughing, giggling. Like people, I was trash in the beginning. Like I just could not, like I, I knew how to, pull, I knew how to, you know, work the guitar, but there yeah. was no theory behind it. So that was like my first three years were backwards. I didn't have anything. I was just like doing tricks that didn't make no sense, you know. So, so <laughs> they were like, oh, he, he's, he's good, but something's off, you know. They were like, it just sounds a little, it, does, it just sounds like you're not going anywhere. But it, it, was, it was a struggle, man. It was a struggle to try to get all together. So for anybody who's, like, inspiring to do what you want to do, sometimes it don't come together until a couple years down the road. Mm. But you got to stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? It's the word of the day. Um, and it, it, it will work itself out. I mean, manifestation is real. Like, whatever you constantly, constantly push and put your energy to, whether you're fucking up or not, something's going to happen. Mm. You know, you push through that little precipice. You know what I mean? It's like the version's first time. You're gonna push through that little force can and it's gonna be great. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but. Man, I I've, I've <clears throat> it's funny talking to you, man. I it's it's never a dull moment, literally. <laughs> I mean, like whether you, you are like telling me a story of something that happened like two weeks ago, three years ago. Or I'm sitting here in my drawers playing my trumpet and you just walk in the door like. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like. For me, I, I just like being around people, you know. So I, I think playing the guitar really was a good accompaniment, uh, you know, to that. Um, so thank you again for bringing me on here. Uh, Humble Beginnings, man. I was trash in the beginning. Mm. Mm. I, that, that was the beginning. I was trash. Nobody didn't want me. I got rejected multiple times. I got taken advantage of by like hustling old deacons from the churches, you know, like these hood churches in, in Winston. It was bad, man. You know, I used to be out there in the cold, like with my guitar. I used to walk around campus. And man, I just, I just, I don't know, man. It was, it was a lot of embarrassing moments when I, when I knew I was trash. But I was like, you know what? Nobody knows because they don't play it. You know what I mean? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> I think being your, like your biggest critique is is bittersweet because you're you're gonna constantly push yourself. But in moments where you probably did really good and impress people, you're probably gonna have this like dull I didn't do it face. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just smile through it. Like I remember uh, you remember Dante he used to tell mm -hmm. me like, you just have to say thank you sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. like people say you did good. Like instead of being like. Oh man, I, you know I wasn't feeling it. Like, don't kill it for them. Just mm -hmm. like you keep it moving, you know. And that that was that was that's how it was in the beginning, because I I did not know, man. I was I was trash. I was like mm -hmm. pure on the doorstep, on fire, you know. So what what kept you pushing? Like, what kept you like even in those moments where like, okay, you've admitted you're trash, but like, what kept you still pushing for that consistency? Um, some people play for others. Some people play for themselves, and that's what I was doing. I was playing for myself. It's, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't until now, just recently, past like two years, I really started playing for other people, you know, like mm -hmm. playing listener, to be honest. 
which is a real thing. You know, sometimes we're just, we're just doing stuff and we're not even really taking into consideration what other people think about it, you know? And I don't know if that's, you know, very egotistical or narcissistic or a combination of both, or just, you know, some hard work could be all of that and some, but uh -huh. yeah, I mean, I think just playing for stuff, it, it was therapy. So sometimes, you know, me, me playing this wrong note over and over and over again, it actually just felt good. You know, I was doing it cause I loved it. Um, and it was new. It was different. I mean, like guitar really saved my life. I was I was in some dark places, in, you know, in college. I was doing stuff I shouldn't have. I had no business doing, um, messing with girls I had no business messing with. You know, mm -hmm. so it, for all that, I, like every time I was hurt, I'm gonna get my guitar. You know, so so it was an outlet. I, so it went from from basketball to playing guitar. Pretty wow. much. But guitar really saved my life, man. It it got me through some dark. And I was you know about to pop a string and hang myself with it. So. I was like, man, I got, I just, I got to keep playing. You know, it was yeah. good therapy, to be honest. Facts, man. And I'm still here because of guitar. <laughs> hey, facts, facts, man. So we're gonna switch up the tempo a little bit. We we're gonna play a little game if you're up for it. You for it? All right, bet. So <clears throat> this one's it's called Think Fast. All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's easy though. It's easy. All right, all right. So, it's gonna be two rounds of five questions. I'm just I'm only gonna do five questions at a time, man. So the the truth that the way to win the game is you got to answer as fast as possible. It doesn't matter if the answer is right or wrong, but you're gonna hear the question and I need to answer right back. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. Shoot it. So we, here's the first five, and it's gonna go fast, and we will stop at the five, and then we'll do another five. All right, you ready? All right, here's the first one. I might be, yeah. What can I buy for a dollar? Thanks. Where are the children hiding? We need the bed. Name your mom's favorite song. You don't want to talk about it. What's 50 minus 13? 47. No. <laughs> 30 Which is heavier, a pound of bricks or a pound of feathers? They're the same. Pounds a pound. Okay, okay. All right. Sorry, right. you made it through the first round pretty well. <laughs> this man I said a, a sex for a dollar. <laughs> you bought sex for a dollar? <laughs> I mean, Arello. <laughs> oh, man, I'm glad they ain't kids watch it. <laughs> All right, so you did good the first round. When you get to school, <laughs> you always have what everybody needs. So here's the second round. You ready? Mm hmm Why were you late to rehearsal? Because I was smoking weed. If you're the headliner, who's opening up? Next question. What's nine plus ten? Nineteen. You stupid. Tell me a secret. Which one? <laughs> Sing a song. Sing a song. Sing a song. I don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if he's gonna go for it, man. You could yeah. say Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> nah, you're not going. For that. <laughs> not, not, sure. Oh man. Yeah. But yeah, man, I appreciate you playing. This is a fun little game, just to yeah, see what comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, man. Uh, I don't know, man. I appreciate you bringing me on. I could talk for days, but you know, I just need a little direction sometimes. <laughs> Facts, man. Yeah, man. Honestly, man, I, I'm just going to share this because, man, one of my favorite moments with you, man, I, I was at the crib. I had actually been, you know, tripping on some acid a little bit. Um, you came through with your guitar, and it was so organic. So organic. You, you know, had this acoustic guitar. You just picked it up and was just playing. And next thing I know, you were just telling stories and the stories just flowed on top of the music. <laughs> and you was just going from story to story. I mean, they had punchlines, they had dramatic moments. It was like this whole ride, like <laughs> <laughs> it like honestly, man, and it, it like at some point, man, that's gotta be like a segment of a show or the Collins show or something. Like you just sitting there with a guitar telling some stories. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's uh, it's coming. It's coming for sure, man. T. Walker has definitely been pushing me towards it. Kelsey's been pushing me towards it. You know, you too. Um, 
you know, uh, Juma Copper Vibrations, we've been doing, uh, they've been doing these uh, 126 story lane, like fireside chats, mm. storytelling nights. Mm -hmm. And they, they, you know, they're on that second one. Probably gonna do another one this month. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I got up on the mic for the first time, man. I told my uh, my uh, catfish story. <laughs> you know, about I used to Facebook pimp when it was a thing. And uh, yeah, they loved it. They loved it. Yeah, that shit was hilarious, dog. <laughs> and it was crazy that I was like, man, I had to censor it up. I was like, I can't say some of this stuff. Kids might be watching. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, using using metaphors and stuff, trying to get the stories on the spot, trying to tell it on the mic, man. It was it was it was pretty cool. But it's coming, man. I got a lot of stories to tell, but I just want to be able to clean it up. And what's crazy is too, like I find myself taking the opportunity to tell stories. That's what maybe. I'm like, okay, it's the perfect time to get the story. I'm like, hey guys, listen, you guys want to hear something? You know? <laughs> and I go into it. And it's 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 like you said, like I may tell this, the same story over and over again, but it's never the same way. So it's just, just yeah, you know, just uh just captivate everybody, man. I just like entertaining, you know. I like seeing everybody having a good time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm like, hey man, you okay? You know, everything all good. You know, I ain't you know, I haven't really seen your teeth today, man. You you know, you haven't <laughs> thumbs at all. So I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. And and normally that just People are like what? It's like there you go, bro. Mm -hmm. It changed the game for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm trying to see now. You got. Me. I'm trying to think of a story now. I'm like, which one I'm about to tell? Mm. I don't know. Let me check to see who's on here really quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let me keep it appropriate. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Share us a story, man. We we got a little bit of time. A little story. Give me a topic. You want me to refer to stories I know you you've told? <laughs> Give me a topic. Oh man! <laughs> somebody drop a somebody drop a topic in the ch uh, chat right here. Yeah, matter of fact, let, let's let it come in more organically from them. <laughs> yeah, in the comments. Okay, right, I know you got a topic. Just give me a topic. She said I can't hear anything. What y'all are saying? Oh, oh well. That might be some technical user errors. To be honest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We might drop a topic in there. Facts. I'm trying to tell you a story about it. I mean, we can go from church to school. It, it really don't matter. To all right, so let's see. Let's do school. Just do school, cause I, I I've heard a little bit about your gig and that stuff. I don't know much about school. School. Uh, there's a, so this may not be completely relevant, but there's a story that comes to mind for this. Mm -hmm. So when I was in school, I used to. I had no filter. Um, no shame in my game, you know, just, just, un just raw, you know what I mean? So there was a situation I had a roommate who couldn't pay his rent that half of the rent and he was short $10. So I'm out here, you know, that day I had on like a button up, a little college button up and some cargo, some cargo shorts and some, uh, what is it, like the boat shoes. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to go get this $10. So I walked up to the top of the street, went to the gas station, and I stood out there and asked for money for about a little over an hour before I, before I got. And mind you, I did this for $10. I don't know mm. I went so hard for this $10. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I had it, too, I could have just gave it to him. Now I think about it. You know? <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm going to go get this $10 for it. Yeah, you know, like, like who does that? I'm going I'm to get it. <laughs> then go to the store, right? So I'm standing out there, right? So I got a bit of a panhandling experience. And let me tell you, it's a real thing. Like, people did not look at me. They, mm -hmm. I'm standing out here looking clean, dressed and everything, looking like I'm about to sell newspapers or, like, scam you or something, you know? <laughs> standing out there, white people, black people, Hispanic people, everybody walked by. Some people looked. Some people didn't even look at me. You know, they just like, I'm like, hey, hey, you know. And you know how they try to get you, hey, bro. Hey, no. <laughs> they, try, they try to get some change, right? So, so I'm out there like, hey, uh, Hey, uh, uh. and they're like, nah, bro, get out of here. But there was this one guy. Let me tell you, man, let's let's talk about pay it for it. This dude hit me with like some, he hit me with like some movie shit right here. So pretty much he stops. And mind you, I was selling apartments too at this time. I was, I was leasing apartments and I lived at the same place. This guy comes and he's like, he's like, hey man, come over here. He sees me. He, he didn't even go in the gas. He sees me, right? Tells him to his car. He told him to come over there. He's like, he was like, man, you you really need this money. I was like, man, I'm just trying to pay my rent. Actually, I got my half. I'm out here for my roommate. You know, 
I just need ten dollars to be honest. He gives me twenty dollars. He gives me twenty dollars in weed as well, and he offers me a job when I told him what I did. And then he tells me, just make sure you pay it forward. So ever since then, I, I never stopped telling people that. Like, whenever I help somebody else, I was like, yeah, you just got to do it for somebody else. Wow. Yeah, so that's a random story of just when I was in <laughs> So mind you, you know, my, my I come back, my roommate's like, hey, man, he's like, you know, he don't want to ask, did you get the $10? But he's like, he... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? <laughs> He's like, what? So I'm telling him the story. They're like, dude, this is crazy. This is crazy. You know? Um, and so, yeah, I come back with, like, this whole story of this guy telling me to pay it forward and how everybody didn't want, you know, to talk to me. And they they shunned me and disregarded me and, like, overlooked me and stuff. And yeah, he, like, he took the time to hear my story and, and, and what I was out there for. Mind you, it's just $10 for my roommate that I had. Mm. You know, which I probably should just gave it to him. <laughs> fun, you know. I guess you know what I mean. You would have had a story, bro, if you had just gave it to him. Story would have had a story, you know. So yeah, um, he offered me a job and everything, and I, I honestly wish I would have gotten with him sooner. Now that I'm like looking into like real estate and stuff like that, because he owned his own apartment complex. He was the landlord of like six townhouses. So oh, he wow. was trying. To, not only did he help me out, he was trying to put me on, and get me to help other people. So it was wow. experience. Yo, that's Ooh. that's crazy. That's a crazy story, man. I, I, that's one I hadn't heard before. Yeah, man. It's this. Yeah, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. <laughs> wow, man. Pay it forward. Consistency yeah. and pay it forward. So if y'all getting any gems from today's interview, man, consistency, pay it forward. Don't be afraid to go stand on the corner and ask for some money. <laughs> I'm humble, man. Like, you'd be surprised what you can do when you don't care what people think. Mm, that's you a know? word right there. You say that again. You'd be surprised what you can do when you don't care what people think. Mm. You know, that'll have you up there at the open mic. You know, like, okay, so growing up, I had a really bad stuttering problem. Mm. Right? Like, I, I, mean, I was the, did, 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 you know what I mean, the, the kid that was starting the car. You know, <laughs> yeah, son. And what's crazy is back then, it wasn't as you know. I'm I'm thirty. I'm about to be thirty two now. It, school wasn't as organized as it is, so they just put all the retards together. I'm sorry, they put all the uh, special needs people that struggling together. You know, so I'm in there. I, I struggle with certain consonants and vowels, and you got Billy over here who can't barely talk, and the next person over here. He's like a BH kid with behavior problems, and they just got us going on this round table trying to work on our problems and stuff, right? They used to send the stuttering kid to get me from class, and I'd be like, dang, don't, he's straight. He, he can't even say the letter K, he, and my name is Colin. You go send him to class to get me? I'm like, come on. So, and I sat in the back of the class, so you got to do that, like, long, like, walk of shame. Like, yeah, I'm going to go work on my talking. You know what I'm saying? So now it's just like getting, I actually have stage fright, you know, mm. a fear of public speaking. But it's just crazy how I just keep, I don't know, I just keep ending up in these situations, like at my job, you know, like at open mics and like now talking and things like that, constantly thinking about like my speech. It's just like, even with that, I had to be consistent with that. I had to think, constantly think about like what I'm saying. Even now, it's like, you know, two, three sentences ahead. Mm. But you could do it, you know? You'd be surprised what you could do when you don't care what people think. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Don't care if people think. I also got my man Ray Vaughn in here. Yo, my friends is showing up. Look at these dudes right here. He said, Fizzle, you this man calls me Fizzle like I'm Lil Fizz from B2K. Don't you know what happened <laughs> to him? Like, come on, man. He was just ranting about uh <laughs> No, I'm not gonna talk about them. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we got some supporters in here. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah, man. <clears throat> you got quite a few people coming commenting. Yeah, I don't know. Miss Star 52, I don't know why you can't hear us. I'm sorry. Um, there's nothing I'm, I got to do for you to hear us, but... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah. She's still saying it? Yeah, she said she she said she said can't hear the two of us, so... Oh, yeah. But, man. No. <clears throat> so, what's... I mean, what's hmm? Sound like an asshole, but is your volume turned up? 
<laughs> no, for real. like I work with system issues all day, and you just you just never know. Like sometimes it's just be that one little thing, or or you got your hold on your on your phone. You know what I'm saying? It's like muted, and it's like no ringtone. You just got a boom, and then all of a sudden, you know, you can hear everything on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. iPhone, for sure, man. God got mad stories, man. I don't know, man. I just encourage everybody to do whatever it is that they want to do. Like you may not wake up tomorrow. You know what mm. I'm saying? Um. I had a couple near death experiences. Not that I'm trying to talk about those, but yeah, you never know. You know, you just never know what can happen. So don't wait till it's too late. You know what I mean? Mm. What's that song about uh John Mayer? Say what you need to say. It's mm. real. It's real. You never know. Mm. Yeah. You guys want another story? Give me a topic. <laughs> Uh, I was actually going to ask you, uh, what's what's coming up next? What's what's next on, on Colin's agenda? What can we expect coming from you? Right now, so, I mean, what I'm working towards, researching and, like, saving up towards is I want to start throwing events, you know? Um, seeing, like, working with Kelsey and the band, mainly Kelsey, to to get that uh, Halloween event, you know, together. Well, she, she went all in, all credit due to this amazing woman here. Um, mm -hmm. It was inspiring. I was like, well, that's what we can do. We need control, you know? Like, I want to, I, I was diving into, like, um, homes, you know, like, real estate and stuff like that, and then looking it up, and then also uh, got in contact with, like, a couple of investors who are interested in, like, putting some, you know, some gigs together. I just want to help my friends around me as artists, you know, such as yourself and other people and provide spaces for them. You know, what's the hardest thing about throwing an event, getting a venue? Yeah. Is it free? You know what I'm saying? Is it not? So I, so I want to have that, you know what I mean? Um, and I think me and Kelsey was talking about, like, getting a house or something like that to record it. We even brought your name. I was like, we're going to put you in, this, in the room. You're going to have your little solid room. You still you just take your whole living room, put it in a, a special room there, you know? And <laughs> just have a one-stop shop. Like, I feel like Greensboro is, like, the roots and Erica Badu and Jill Scott and all of them and, and most of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got that here. And I don't – and I've been – Cali, I've been – up and down the East Coast, Baltimore, down in Alabama. I really don't see that. You know, any, I, I don't see it. I'm not saying it's not there, but I haven't seen it. And so everybody who does see it and comes to our events, they love it, you know? So it's like, I just want to monetize all of that. And in this new day and age, really, the less you kind of, I mean, if, the, if you can make things easier for yourself, you can make more money. You know, it's not about how hard you work. I, I just got off of Charlemagne's uh, page and he was posting, it was like, it's not about working two, three jobs. You know what I'm saying? Who do you know that works two, three jobs that's making it and got more money than you? <clears throat> Successful, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we got to stop trading time for money. I mean, as artists, time is money in a sense because we perform things like that, but it's like outside of that, the setup and all of that, you know? Uh, we need to be able to monetize ourselves, like have this passive income, you know, that's coming in. So I'm just, I'm at this point now, I'm just growing up, working on my credit, you know, trying to, trying to do some big boy things and stop playing games. Yeah, it's getting a little old. <laughs> Man, always a mentality. Yeah. So, so. I time frame for myself, which, which is kind of like now. And I know that's kind of like a hard time frame to like make something happen like right now. Uh, and I feel like if I think about that every day, then it's going to push me to get there. Distancy, right? No, no doubt, man. <clears throat> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud that I know you, man. I'm, I'm happy that you know we're actually frat brothers and everything. That I met you through Kelsey and, um, you know, all of that. I appreciate you coming on my show. Is there anybody you want to shout out or you know send some love to before we get off? I want to shout out my man Jordan, you know, for bringing me here, working with him. I, he didn't even say that he was with the, he was in the band with us, you know, for a little while, you know, with Kelsey. They, he, he just kind of like overlap that you know earlier but it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about out you today <laughs> players want to shout out t, t walker copper vibrations uh t swilly tyrissa malcolm in the middle by the shot the whole band like all their nicknames and everything i, I want to shout out everybody that's watching you know i mean you guys came for a reason you were interested you know what i mean uh most of you guys don't know me some of you do so i appreciate you being here and, you know we do this all for you guys and each other it's, it's the community. That's that, you know, that's how it happens. It takes the village, right? So, yeah, shout out to everyone. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you taking out the time to come on the show live from the Inkwell. <clears throat> man, I wish you well in all that you do. 
And uh, we'll see y'all next week, next Wednesday. Man, peace out. Peace out. All right, y'all. Bye. <laughs>